you know, a fucking high five from me or a shot or something. Um, I do appreciate it. You guys are always awesome. Um, thank you for the support. Keep it up. Um, I will be with you every step of the way. I will give you guys as much as I can. Mike is doing the same. We totally love you guys. Okay. So be ready for the next uh, the next thing coming up, which will be that release. Um, and also, we're gonna post a remix kit eventually, um, where you guys can download the you know the parts and uh, remix it. You know, for those who are out there. Like I, I don't care, man. Look, if you if you like make house music, if you make EDM, you make freaking trance you make industrial like i don't care i i want to hear it. i want to hear what you're doing you know i'm i'm so excited about it uh i know it doesn't show i'm a very kind of like a not dry person but you know um but i'm really excited about it i'm really excited about doing this and and interacting with you guys more uh it, it's totally something that i think is awesome and i can't wait uh thanks again for the support and uh thanks for watching fan access until next time. Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, I'm back again. I, I just wanted to um, I wanted to answer some of the questions you guys had. Also, I wanted to give you guys a small uh, tour of my not so studio. Uh, <laughs> and um, so I just you know this Q and A part. Uh, it it's you know it's good. So uh, we'll start with um, my brother. It's funny. I mean, you know, we don't live in the same state anymore, so we, we don't really talk as much. Um, he, Larry, you wrote, how will your new music differ from the albums you've produced in the past with Level 2.0? Okay. <clears throat> well, um, with the exception of Mike not being the vocalist, um, musically, I think that it'll have its similarities, but I am gearing towards giving it a, a difference uh i mean it'll obviously have a difference of view or opinion maybe um than normal but the you know other than that musically it'll be similar that's all i can really say about that similar because uh you know it's me who's making the music so it's gonna have my appeal and then you know it's of course i'm gonna you know i always try to and always strive to do better things, uh, to better myself and to, you know, be an expert at the craft. So I, I just, you know, I will, I mean, you know, you, you'll hear it. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Next question, uh, from Ray, uh, Ray's a buddy of mine from the army, actually. Um, okay. Where does the influence for lyrics come from? Any backstories? Okay. So Ray, the influence is, uh, it's going to be based on you know, like the soldier's perspective. So anything, you know, I'm not just talking the monotony of standing around, but like, you know, like stuff that actually like it happens, stuff that soldiers go through, our story to be told, you know what I mean? So any backstories? Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to base it on some real life events, maybe like when I was deployed or, you know, from other guys that I know or anything else like that, uh, you know, that other than that, you know, that's pretty much going to be the storyline. Um, so next question, uh, Larry, again, you being a DJ, dabble in a broad spectrum of music. Why this genre over so many others? Okay, this is actually a really good question. Let me ask, let me explain why. Um, yes, I, when I DJ, I I do uh, I do branch off. I do do other types of music. Um, I love to spin tech house music. It's fun. It's great for live remixing. Uh, you know, you really learn a lot DJing that way. Um, but I mean, when it comes down to the genre of like EBM industrial, which is where we fall into, not necessarily, uh, I don't like to confine myself there either. You know what I'm saying? So like if, if I do branch, like uh, there'll be elements of everything involved, but for some reason, yes, it always falls within the industrial EBM future pop synth pop scene. Um, this is where I grew, uh, musically and it's where i feel the most comfortable i can say you know what i mean um so i think that you know plus how do i explain this is this is that's a good question i said it's a good question i i feel comfortable in that style of music because it's aggressive and it's not like 
aggressive like your typical electronic EDM like you know so called rave. that they have today um you know yeah that like there's similarities with you know hard kicks harsh bass whatever but i mean you rarely hear a male vocalist being angry in a track like that so I'll, you know if we're going to express that you'll never see anger really expressed in a track like that um they always want to talk about you know chewing gum and walking down the street high-fiving each other and running through waterfalls so uh no i'm not into that so next question <laughs> i'm gonna I'm going to, uh, actually, maybe I'll answer Jordan's question. Mike might want to answer this one, too. Uh, why are the guys in level 2.0 so sexy? Do they find it hard to be on stage with each other because of their sex appeal? Well, uh, Jordan, actually, you've been on stage with us uh, a couple of times. So, I mean, how did you feel? <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, uh, Mike and I on stage was always a good time, and, uh, you know, like I said, I, I I look forward to doing other shows with Mike. I think it'll be cool. Um, uh, sex appeal? I, I don't really think about that when I'm up there. I, I kind of think about the music and um, making the crowd go crazy and screaming. If anyone who's ever been to a level 2.0 show where I was involved, it's usually me yelling profanities and trying to get people pumped and pumped up. Next. Okay, Larry, <clears throat> can we expect any appearances by Mike from Level 2.0 or any other feature features or collaborations? Yes, actually. Mike will be involved. Uh, I'd like to get him vocally, you know. Uh, I'd even like him to do some remixes for me. Um, I, I think uh, I'd like to branch out and get some other people involved. Uh, maybe some people from other genres, other scenes, especially vocalists. Uh, vocalist is always something cool. I always want to play around with what can be done and what can be pushed as far as vocals go and how you could stretch beyond boundaries that, you know, people aren't really breaching at this point in time. <clears throat> I mean, we, we did that already, actually. We did that, uh, uh, Mike and myself, with uh, with Intercept. You know, we had, we had Sabrina Garner do vocals, and she wasn't... You know, she had no idea the type of music. It was way aggressive for her, you know, for her taste. But she actually came in, did what she had to do, and it was it was cool, you know. Oh, uh, let me see. <clears throat> My mom. Mom. All right. Mom said, how did you get involved in this genre of music? Who or what inspired you? I inspired myself. Um, I never felt inspired by anybody. Um, when it came to getting involved in this genre... I love the music, don't get me wrong, but I never felt like anyone drove me to do it. I had favorite bands that I liked a lot, that I always felt uh, I connected with musically, um, you know, and uh, other than that, no, I mean, the only drive I, I could say, or like, ins inspiration, I guess, was fed off of how I felt confident uh confidently musically uh and working together with mike in the studio and as a friend you know with a friendship being involved like it was fun you know what i'm saying like it was always fun but like it was fun so we would always feed off each other i think that's the only true inspiration and i guess other than the fact that like i wanted to be able to make the best song possible and i always felt like i never got there you know what i mean um, there was always something with each album, but once, uh, you know, once going down the road as you progress, you're always like, oh man, I, I got to top that one. I got to top that one. I got to top that one. So you just keep pushing forward and pushing forward and you want to be better and be better. And it actually, that's, that's the true inspiration right there. And, um, our fans just for backing us up, you know, and, and our family and our, you know, our friends and our, all their support. That's that's the true inspiration. I, I don't I don't feel I was ever inspired by anything else. Um, so that concludes the um, the portion of questions and you know whatever. You guys could always hit me up and um, ask me any questions you want. Okay. <clears throat> this is my wonderful studio. It's called a laptop computer. Right now I don't have any hardware. Um, I I 
I would love to grab more hardware, but I have plenty of software since, plus the um, basically the sounds and samples of true synths that you know have been ripped from those synths. Let's keep that quiet, guys. We're not supposed to do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just a clip <clears throat> of a track that I'm working on. Okay. So I'll give you the intro and like the basis. This is going to be the first the first track uh, off the Infidel album called Strike. Now, this is very broken up. It's not anything set in stone. So there's a lot of um, very naked parts. <clears throat> there actually is a verse written, but not recorded. So I'm just going to go ahead and play that now. Get you guys a little closer so you can see. I don't know. There we go. vocals go. And then it stops. Okay? The reason it stops is because <clears throat> I am not done yet. So, uh, right now I'm at the part where I'm going to um, put in the chorus, which is where uh, this is my favorite part. So, I think that, you know, once I get there, um, I'll have a better idea. Now, I don't I don't really want to expose it too much, um, especially, like, since I'm going to be putting it out there for a remix contest. Um, you know, I, if it were me hearing something ahead of time, I would already be, like, getting ideas. So, I don't know how other people are operating, but it's no time for ideas yet. Punch you in the face, all right? So, um, you know, that's just an idea. It's... It's not anything, what I just showed you. It's just a shell of a intro and... Curse. <coughs> when everything's said and done, it'll be good to go. Um, it'll probably sound similar but much different, okay, at the same time. Uh, if you guys have any other questions regarding Infidel Level 2.0 or anything like that, you know, um, you can contact me on Facebook. You can talk to me anytime. You know, let me, ask me how the progress is going. Uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to share as much as I can with you guys without completely giving it all away. I don't like to discuss the type of software synths that I use, or I don't like to discuss instruments and stuff like that. What I can say is that um, I mold my own sounds. I don't use preset sounds. I don't, um, I don't know how to put it, but like, I really, I model my own stuff. I, it's just something I like to do. I don't want to be generic. And, you know, I don't, I never want it to be. And it's the same thing with Level 2.0. It was never meant to be something totally generic. Uh, so, but I will strive to make things much better than what you just heard. Like I said, it's, it's really just a rough beginning. So I appreciate you guys and your questions. I appreciate you guys' support. And I would love to, you, love to in the future, you know, do this again later on down the road when I'm a little further along, uh, especially when it's time for me to put out something for the remix contest. So until that time, until that time.